Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Hashna Subramaniam from Mahatma Gandhi uh, Medical College and Research Institute, Puducherry. My paper topic was role of 1.5 Tesla magnetic resonance spectroscopy in intramedullary spinal lesions. Uh, spectrum of diagnostic considerations may affect the spinal cord, which includes developmental anomalies, inflammation, infectious processes, vascular disease, degenerative conditions, as well as benign and malignant neoplasms. Patients with intramedullary spinal cord lesions commonly present with tickling pain, numbness, and weakness. MRI is the current imaging modality of choice in the evaluation of patients presenting with myelopathic symptoms in the search for spinal cord lesions. It is important to recognize and differentiate non-neoplastic from neoplastic process spinal cord as the two entities differentiation is extremely crucial to the neurosurgeon. MRS is a non-invasive tool which helps to characterize the chemical composition of human tissue. That way it can help to better characterize pathologic process affecting the spinal cord and also help to provide important clinical markers for differential diagnosis. Aims and objectives are, the purpose of the study is to determine the role of 1.5 MRS in evaluation of patients with intramedullary spinal cord lesions to enable reliable metabolic concentration and to correlate that is histopathological. Inclusion criteria is patients with intramedullary spinal cord lesions. Exclusion criteria are patients with recurrent lesions, previously operated lesions, and contraindications for MRI like pacemaker, cochlear impact, and non-consenting and non-cooperative patients. Materials and methods uh, the study was carried out on 30 patients with intramedullary spinal lesions for a period of one year from June 2021 to June 2022. Written and informed consent was obtained from each patient in the patient in the study group. Standard MRI spine and MR spectroscopy were done on 1.5 Tesla Philips Archiva MRI scanner. The sequence lasts for about five minutes. This is the spinal MRS protocol. Single voxel MRS was applied either in T2 SAG or post contrast T1 SAG, fat suppressed in heat. Size of the voxel adjusted according to the size of the lesion. MRS data were acquired, post processing done to obtain good spectrum of metabolites. Integral values of metabolites in each spinal, intermediate spinal cord lesion were obtained. These patients were followed for the post operative tissue and histopathological ex examination results to compare the MRS findings. The first cases, we'll now uh, discuss the like, common spinal cord neoplasm, neoplasms. Uh, first case is intramedullary tubercloma. 30-year-old male uh, had history of uh, numbness involving all four limbs. Uh, T2 showed long segment intramedullary, T2 SAT showed long segment intramedullary hyperintensity from C8 to D8 level. T1 fat SAT post contrast showed intense homogeneous enhancement from D4 to D8. MRS showed reduced NAA and creatine with increased lactate peak at 1.3 ppm. Biopsy came out to be tuberculous etiology. Uh, coming to second case, ependymoma. 20 years old female patient presented with the complaint of gradual onset of quadriparesis. There were no history of fever. T2 showed heterointense hetero solid lesion with hyperintense cystic areas causing cord expansion occupying the medulla and cervical dorsal region. T1 post contrast showed heterogeneously enhancing lesion at cervical medullary junction. MRS showed decreased the NAA, uh, lactate was not very much increased, and creatine is increased. Biopsy came out to be low grade glioma. Coming to third case, astrocytoma, 30 years old male had history of uh, progressive weakness involving both upper limb. T2 showed intramedullary T2 hyper intramedullary T2 hyperintensity with cord expansion extending from C5 to C7 level. T1 post contrast showed subtle enhancement within the lesion. MRS showed uh, increased choline, uh, NAA decreased, creatine was almost like uh, zero. A biopsy came out to be uh, like glioblastoma features. Coming to the results, in tuberculoma, we have significant increase in lipid and lactate with decreased NAA, coli not significantly increased. In dermatitis, uh, lipids mixed with lactate peak will be seen and lactates were also clearly observed at 1.3 ppm. In ependymoma, coli significantly increased, NAA decreased and lactate were not very much in decreased. In three patients, we observed significant increase in the creatine peak at 3.9 ppm. In low-grade glioma, NAA decreased, lactate not very much increased, creatine increased, and choline was found to be increased. In GBM, choline increased, creatine almost zero, NAA decreased. In multiple sclerosis and other inflammatory lesions, significant reduction in NAA was observed. Conclusion, MR spectroscopy of the spinal cord is the valuable non-invasive tool for research and diagnosis because it can provide additional information which is complementary to other non-invasive imaging methods. It is also an emerging tool which adds us a new biomarker information to characterize the spinal cord tumors to differentiate benign and malignant lesions, thereby helps to prevent unnecessary biopsies and surgeries. 
However, the application of MRS in the spinal cord is not straightforward and great care is required to attain optimal spectral quality. Thank you.